Marvel logo's opening aspect ratio shrinking to the 4.3 old TV standard and it pulls out the 5.1 surround sound and condenses it to mono with all its tinny glory. All that to say, WandaVision style opening credits. But also, the logo has been updated with Ragnarok, Infinity War, and Endgame footage, the most poignant to me being the Iron Man change. We used to have Tony using his hand repulsor blast for the first time with his freshly painted suit in Iron Man 1, and it's the moment he realizes he created a weapon and not just a flight suit. Remember this conversation? I thought you said you were done making weapons. It is. This is a flight stabilizer. It's completely harmless. Anyway, it's been swapped for his final act with that same hand when he snaps using the ultimate weapon to save humanity. My, how far we've come. Yes, those are movies, and this is a WandaVision video. Why are you confused? You like it? I'll do more. It's that simple. We can look at this one of two ways. We are actually experiencing the show with Darcy as she tunes in, or this is how Wanda experiences the Hex, partially as an out-of-body experience, which makes sense since it's one humongous magical coping mechanism. And the area code on the house they steal is for New Jersey, so... Area Code aficionados knew where we were three episodes before non-Area Code aficionados. The regular husband and wife. Also, the song is on the nose with exactly what Wanda wants, just to be regular with vision. Her title sequence is her own backstory to explain why they're there, poking fun at the goofs and lacking continuity of mid-century sitcoms by having vision immediately break the internal law they just established. But an even more fun way to look at it is that they're adapting to their new environment, especially since vision was literally just created here a few moments ago, and Wanda gets to show off her own magic. Even the effects are practical, exactly like they would have been in the 60s. You can almost see the strings attached to the towel. My wife for the flying saucers. Uh, get it? Because aliens exist and some kill him. My husband and his indestructible head. And Elizabeth Olsen was born to play the consummate 50s, 60s housewife. That and a woman who did destroy a robot's indestructible head, but especially this. And speaking of perfect casts, I think Paul Bettany said all that needs to be said about any Dick Van Dyke reboots. What was the question again? Perhaps an evening. Of great significance. To us both. Naturally. Obviously. Exactly. Love. I know episode 2 is much more directly Bewitched, but these twinkles are right out of the Bewitched intro, and to be honest, I just spent a lot more time watching Bewitched and I Dream of Genie on Naked Night. Hello dear, I'm Agnes, your neighbor to the right. Comic readers knew exactly who this was, ag athahark nez Also, she name drops a 90s show about witches. Charmed. And it's the role Catherine Hahn was born to play, which was actually an amazing way to hide her secret because she's just so dang perfect. So What's your name, where are you from, and most importantly, how's your bridge game, hun? Nosy Neighbor is the ideal cover for an evil witch trying to figure out who's witching better than her. An anniversary then? Yes! yes. Everything about this is so Laura Petri. By the way, fun fact, Mary Tyler Moore was 25 when she started on The Dick Van Dyke Show, which blew my mind. Dick was 36, which sounds like a huge gap until you learn that Lizzie was 31 and Paul was 49, so I guess they kept that going. But the way they capture the cadence and joke structure from the 60s is impeccable. The only way Ralph would remember our anniversary is if there was a beer named June 2nd. What Ralph could really use is how to goose your wife so you don't lose your wife. Even the awkwardness. Would you be so good as to tell me what it is we do here? Poking fun at the office job work of early sitcoms, but blending it with the idea that Vision has no clue how he came to be in this universe. Heart shadowing, or heart shadowing. Oh yes, the heart. Hmm. You got a screw loose? Oh no, sir. Screws all tighten, sir. You're like a walking computer. What? I most certainly am not. The like not a robot joke per word count in the show alone is through the roof. No skeletons in your closet, eh, Vision? I don't have a skeleton, sir. Also not his closet. Even Wanda's brain commercials reference her real TV life with a chicken and a lobster on the wall. Chicken a la king with lobster thermidor. Batman's favorite, and maybe mint jellies in the wallpaper. Think Diane and mint jellies for your maid. And obviously Howard Stark making toasters rather than missiles. And listen, the toaster even makes the repulsor warming up sound when the lever is pulled down. And the red light blinking must be Wanda subconscious remembering the missile landing in her house. Forget the past. This is your future. She's trying. Are you paying attention? What do you think this is? Uh, oh, right. That's, that's your point. We don't break bread with bullshit. Oh. Is your husband tired of you burning his toast? Some casual mid-century misogyny and a little Cold War red scare for good measure. Just saying, they got the time period right. Another practical jump cut dress change. You're awfully dense, aren't you, Vivian? My wife once made me so dense I fell through the floor. Shall I just preheat the oven then, dear? That won't be necessary. Oh. Agnes again secretly trying to figure out what's going on, which is funny when you consider that she's just playing along as a mix of the Ethel Mertz and Gladys Kravitz of Wanda's show. Well, I know you're in a pinch, so this menu can be done in a snap. Come on, nothing can be done in a snap. 
Or at least half of nothing. You ain't gonna rock and roll no more. Yang and yang. Don't talk back. Amazing moves from Kitty and amazing vocals from the Darren Robot. A woman intimately familiar with the repercussions of turning back time, which oh, even funny gags are actually trauma coming out. <laughs> oh no! Again, as the show gets to later, pure shenanigans. Of course, Wanda could just drop the lobster in with her hands, but then we wouldn't get her magicking them out the window. <laughs> Using those seduction techniques well. Stumble when you walk into a room, so he can catch you. Oh. Hi. Uh, so, she must immediately recognize the dead Avenger, right? That in mind, she holds it together pretty well. Why don't you have children yet? I think what my wife means to say is that... What she means to say is don't ever, under any circumstances, ask another human that question. There is no good reason to ask because the answer could be anything from we hate children to we can't have children, and everything in between, none of the answers being any of our business. Ah, <sighs> lessons learned from the 60s. Uh, sexism, uh, McCarthyism, and procreationism. Yes, what exactly is your story? Lots of people asking that very question after this episode aired, some just as angry. And that leads to two breaks from Wanda's reality. The first is Mr. Hart getting so angry, which is interesting when you think about it because that's the one dimension of his character. He's angry. So he's able to let a little of himself through and channel that question. Why? Why did you? through his character, whereas Mrs. Hart has to continue to be the upbeat wife, so even though she actually turns to Wanda, begging her to make her actual husband stop choking, she still has to do it with Georgina's cheery disposition. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> and it's also the only time we break from the multi-camera setup and do some almost Twilight Zone-like push-ins that are a little too close for sitcoms. Vision, help him. And Viz is a part of that too, since he's new and is essentially trying to learn and follow the rules of Wanda's world, so he doesn't know what he's allowed to do or even what his role is yet. And I'm always down for a good neoing, by the way, in effect, not done practically for practical reasons. This guest is leaving your home. And as is normal with all sitcoms, it's wrapped up nice and neat by the end, even though the night was a complete disaster. It's a happy suburbia middle management ending. We'll see about that promotion, huh? One last practical effect where you can even see their fingers jolt inward for the jump cut insert, so we know we're still in Wanda's world. Ha! And they're inside the hex. A gone. Woohoo, that mystery? Was she being trapped in there by this person? Nah, it's just Darcy, the most likable character in all of the MCU. Don't at me, I haven't thought about it that much, but it's true. Also have loved the closing credits music from the beginning, makes everything you just witnessed even more eerie. Now that we're to the second episode, the Marvel logo is back to color and full aspect ratio and we get to see Black Panther's purple blast. The funniest part about the canned laughter is that it wasn't canned for the first episode. They actually had a studio audience. And then I change. <laughs> but now that the audience is laughing solely at the light turning on and off with a bewitched sound effect, we're probably back to canned. Scandalous. Or as Wanda would say. Now that's romantic. But fun history fact, the Hayes Code prevented couples from sharing a bed on TV. And although the first couple to share a bed on TV was on Mary Kay and Johnny in 1947, they were married in real life. Samantha and Darren were the first non-IRL married couple to do it. Get the light. But now we know why she's four months pregnant in a decade. Even the internal references are non-stop. The heart on the calendar was just about Mr. Hart coming for dinner, right? Well, Vision also drew one on their deed. Make it, steal it, imprison it, and same deal. Who's that, Magneto? Wanda's dad buried in the floor, somewhere between the cask of Amontillado and the telltale heart? Oh, it's just a fun Grim Reaper nod with no further meaning at all, except that he was in a comic with Vision. That would be ridiculous if Disney teased something about Wanda's family that was actually a bait and switch. Huh, Monica Rambeau even made it into the animated intro. Very much appreciate the entire town dancing along to the theme song they can't hear. Oh my gosh, are they all experiencing this as cartoons with the song playing in their head? Dark Wanda, dark. Plus, it's our chance to appear as normal as possible while doing so. Well, I don't think that should be a problem. This is our home now. I want us to fit in. I enjoy how sharply the edges of the TV talk and reality talk are defined. Wanda gets a little serious after Vision's jokey jokes and she really does want them to be able to stay there. And after he drops another joke, you can see her face transform back into sitcom Wanda. Westview Viteriners. <laughs> I'll see you at Curtain Call. And I'll talk about this as we keep going forward, but this show is about grief. And if you're paying attention, you'll notice that Wanda goes through all five stages throughout the show. We are in denial right now, where she's pretending like this is all normal because it's easier than dealing with her grief. Her snapback to TV reality is a perfect example. Interesting that Iron Man's colors are the first to make it into Wanda's fantasy. Her 
you know, perfect. Look, it's the star of the show. Oh, Agatha, always saying a thing that could mean another thing. Oh, I brought my pet rabbit for your magic act. Is, is Catherine Hahn always a win? Yes, I, I think she is. The only movie I think I've done is Spider-Verse, and she was really one of my favorite parts of that movie, so yeah. Catherine Hahn is always a win. That feels, feels good. It feels right. Can I give you a bit of friendly advice? Is it about the way I'm dressed? Yes, but it's too late for that. <laughs> Which checks out since Wanda's Mary Tyler Moore Capri's got her inspiration in just as much trouble, although it worked out in the end. Or maybe I could just be myself. <laughs> Another double-edged joke since women absolutely had to play the role in 50s and 60s TV, and also Agatha knows, at the very least, that Wanda's self wouldn't really jive with 60s Westview. The devil's in the details, Bev. That's not the only place he is. Is it your bunny? Is Mephisto supposed to be your bunny? Oh, she's just being mean about Dottie and becoming an alcoholic from boredom. How is anybody doing this sober? But knowing now who Agnes really is, I sort of expect her to look at the camera and say, why are you laughing? I'm dead serious. For the children. Wessenford Gloucesterview. I actually don't know what I'm doing here. Honesty. Could you tell me how often you rotate security patrols? Do you want to face directly with local law enforcement? An Avenger would know the right questions to ask, even if he barely remembers and is essentially a newborn baby. You know those bowling trophies Arthur's always polishing? He bought them all at a yard sale in Hackensack. This bowling trophy? I too have some top secret gossip to share. Norm here's a communist. Here we are dipping back into McCarthyism. I guess the joke is that Sokovia is sort of the Soviet Union, so it's like her own fears about jingoist Americans hating her for no other reason than her Eastern European accent. Yeah, that, that checks out. Did you hear the man? He doesn't eat food. Is gum food? Is butt legs? We'll never know. Oh man, this drawing, it brings me me back to something even I have no idea what it is. Is it Jetsons? You could tell me that Bewitched used this exact drawing style and I'd believe you without question. But I assure you, I don't mean anyone any harm. I don't believe you. Yeah, thousand year old vengeance demons have a nose for these things. Poor Anya. I mean, honesty. Who is that? Who are you? Another break brought on by Wanda being distracted by voices she shouldn't be hearing, which allows Dottie to break free and questions her reality for a second. It's entirely possible that every Westview resident wakes up for that split second. Who's doing this to you, Wanda? Grief, Jimmy, it's grief doing it to her. Since we know it's the same two Westview residents in all of these commercials, I can't help but wonder if they're just standing around in the dark waiting for their 15 seconds a day. Bleak. Oh man, was that Strucker slamming Wanda's cell door shut? <laughs> Even when Vision is drunk, he still does a superhero landing recovery. I can't believe Deadpool and Vision could technically be in the same movie now. And then Wade could applaud this. For the children. For, For the, the children. children. Sandview, Westershire. Flores! You just do it. You don't say it out loud, honey. <laughs> Apparently Jimmy was watching WandaVision religiously. Flourish. Flourish! The entire magic act turned comedy act feels like such a plot out of Bewitched that I almost feel like it must actually be from Bewitched. The whole thing is believable. I mean, if you showed this to someone in the 60s, I don't think they would have thought twice about it. Especially this Alexis Rose shoulder shimmy. Oh, it is. It is what? It's my card. Pardon me, Herb, have it back. <laughs> Did I already say that Paul Bettany was born to play this? I'm doing it! And again, done with period accurate practical effects, which is a sign that it's all part of Wanda's story, even if it seems like she's not in control. Which will make you realize that Vision choking on the gum was also part of her script. Is that how mirrors work? Shut up, Beth. <laughs> Honest questions. So she doesn't do the upper lip nose twitch, but Wanda's sound effects are pretty close to Samantha's. What's in the pot? I'm not as funny without it, I'm right. Disagree. We are so so hilarious! It's Wanda's deliberately hacky writing again, but slightly more believable than Mr. Hart being happy about the dinner where he almost died. My point is that this happy ending would be a reason to stay in the 60s, whereas she left the 50s after the weird dinner. And like I was just saying, based on effects, Vision saving him from dying was not actually part of the script, so most likely neither was him choking. For the children! For the children! San West, Vutershire. For the children. Vuford, Shire, West Gloucester. Vision, is this really Yes, my love. Paul Bettany's sincerity will scoop your heart out. <laughs> By the way, is this wallpaper Strucker's Hydra base in Age of Ultron? Dark, Wanda. Dark. And the whole color thing is appropriate since Bewitched switched from black and white to color for the third season not too long after Tabitha, Samantha's baby, was born. And ending episode two in another hex. Have I praised Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez for these amazing Pitch Perfect title sequence songs yet? Each one captures the period expertly right down to the 70s bop ba ba's. 
fan, you probably noticed the similarities between the songs, but fun fact, they all carry a variation of this same motif. Agnes continuing her glamorous magazine indoctrination. And we're progressing the story forward in the title sequence this time, with the crib they build later, and also taking another note from Dick on stuffed animal choice. And everyone's still in the hex. Is. Hexes. To be a proud papaya. Were the 70s the era of the pun? Well, I have none to steal. Mom's the word. <laughs> Maybe that's why I liked it so much. Crib? Uh, I was thinking Tommy. Then there's Billy, isn't there? <laughs> I think Wiccan or Speed are better names, but what do I know? Every pregnant woman in a sitcom for the last, I don't know, century has done the Lamaze breathing technique, whether they actually go to Lamaze classes or plan on using the Lamaze labor method or not. And everyone is so concerned about communism, but they didn't realize it was the inspiration for Lamaze breathing that the Soviets were using to get into the US. Not the first time they fought back to back, more or less. Yes, I know what you mean. So in her first edit, Wanda just rewound so that Vision could repeat his lines, but this time, she legit rewrote his lines. This is the first big hint that he's not the real Vision. But it's more than that, isn't it? The truth is, we are in uncharted waters. Find a goddess within. Yeah, we used to think they made her a goddess, but now we know they just, like, gave her witch steroids? Also love the Hydra-ish Octopus logo. But first, I gotta borrow a bucket. All the pipes in my ceiling burst at once, and I gotta bail myself out. I need some office supplies. Which brings me to my question. Do y'all still keep those in your spare room? This entire plot line is the definition of shenanigans. It often feels like deliberately lazy writing to poke fun at the 70s. What? <laughs> what was that? You can always hear in the audio mix when someone snaps out of it for a second. Fancy. <laughs> and then Tiona Paris changes her voice back to fit back in. Bermuda awaits and my car decides to poop out right at this moment. Uh, so it's kind of like a reverse Truman Show, just with a lot more unlawful imprisonment. I, I may be late to the party, but I imagine there is a logical explanation for that. Optimism. Well done, do you want to meet your son as yourself? They even capture the sincere moments they used to throw into the nonstop quip fest of the 70s, but it always lands between these two. We let the little ladies keep tabs on their growing babies with fruit. Makes it simple for them. I think you might have what it takes to be a nurse. The only thing that's probably not era accurate is Wanda shaking her head to all the sexism. You know, so hard to escape. <laughs> Again, the audience laughter mixed with the ominous line delivery makes my skin crawl. His name was Pietro. The first really big clue that Wanda is actually the one in control since she snaps herself back to reality. Her accent comes back and Wanda the Avenger is in the room. What did you say about Pietro? I think you should leave. No husband. There's nothing wrong with that. No home. And again, Agnes is just messing with everything. She might know Monica is sword, she might not, but either way, she constantly wants to stir stuff up to figure out what Wanda's powers are. After two full episodes and 80% of this one in denial, Wanda has finally moved on to the next stage of grief, anger. We can tell she's finally angry here, and she expels Monica because she reminds her of her grief. I'm sure we all noticed Agatha's brooch that Agnes wears no matter the decade. Fun detail. She came here because we're all... In this together, right? Oh, he means trapped. Who are you? I touched on it quickly earlier, but if you're left wondering why Wanda even bothers jumping to the next decade, other than for our enjoyment, it's because at the end of each episode, something awful happens that makes her need to escape again. Again, that's all this is, right? It's one big escape from reality. So when Kitty starts glitching out and Mr. Hart almost chokes to death, she runs to the 60s. In the 60s, after the radio and broken glass incident, she sees a beekeeper come out of the sewer and nopes all the way to the 70s, where she goes through pregnancy in one day and then has to boot Monica out of the hex for reminding her of Pietro's death or reality, and we'll cover the next few decades in the next episode. Love the way Wanda actually moves her hands to expand the aspect ratio. Daydream Appropriate song, but I like to imagine the monkey's daydream believer was the last thing Wanda put into Monica's head just to mess with her as it slowly wore off. And the credits each week are a visualization of going into a CRT TV with the red, blue, and green color blocks. And using red, Wanda's primary color, to show that all the creations aren't real. And each episode closes as if turning off a TV. 
Okay, and a quick wrap up to say not a whole bunch happens in these three episodes for the larger story beyond what I already covered. I know some people were a little annoyed by that fact because they just had no idea where we were headed, especially after the first two. At least three ends with Monica getting chucked out and we learn that there at least is a real world connected to this story. I'll have more conclusion to say on the next three and probably the most to say after the last three, but I could never say enough about Elizabeth Olsen, Paul Bettany, and Katherine Hahn. All three blow me out of the water in this series the way they adapt to each role and then switch back to something more serious when needed. More of that in the next three episodes. Anyway, I'm sort of flying by the seat of my pants here. The channel is called Cinema Wins, and I really don't care because after 2020, the definition of cinema changed, so here we are. I genuinely hope this is something you enjoy. A lot of you have been commenting and tweeting this at me, so I figured let's give it a try. I definitely can't promise I'll do it for every show, obviously, but if this goes well, I think you can imagine the shows that would make sense. Here's to hoping, and thanks for coming with me on this slight departure from the norm. I'm going to put a week or two between these for now so that non-WandaVision fans won't be disappointed. But next Next week, a relevant movie to another movie that's coming to streaming that I think most people hated and I haven't seen in two decades but remember loving. Should be fun. I say, oh, I don't eat food. Well, that explains the empty refrigerator. <laughs>